It is Friday afternoon around 2.30, the 19th of June. I spent the morning painting my shed, so I'm going to actually play that while I'm talking here. So you won't get too bored. You know, I have something to look at other than my ugly mug. So you can see I got a bit of a haircut here for the summertime. You know, less hair on your head, keep cooler, that kind of thing. Although a lot of people think that it doesn't get hot here in Canada. It certainly does, especially here where I live. It gets very humid too, and that's killer. First thing I want to do is a little bit of a follow-up on the mini forge heat treatment oven project in that I measured the resistance of the coil and came up with 40 ohms and said that that doesn't equal the 1500 watts that they're claiming. I was a little bit mistaken there. I went back and I had a look at it. This was spurred on by a comment actually. So as it turns out the two coils that make up the whole thing are 20 ohms each and when they're in series they're 40 ohms but when they're paralleled which is possible in the heater as well they are 10 ohms which gets it up fairly close to that 1500 watt. So my apologies to the manufacturer of the heater for you know, maligning the product, just uh, failing to do my research before I got going on it. So along with the heating coil and the cord, I got some other neat parts. If you read the website article, you know that I actually had to take part two heaters because I kind of botched up the first coil. So I've got a couple of these little paddle switches, which will come in handy. I've also got two of these four position switches, which I know will definitely come in handy. Also, a pair of these little neon lights and the little red bezel that will go along with it. So those are neat parts to have and I'll add those to my basement electronics room. So I've cleared most of the stuff out of here from the heat treat oven experiment. I'm not going to mess with that anymore right now. I got an email from someone asking me when I plan on getting back to woodworking. You know everybody gets in a panic when you start doing things different. On this channel I'm showing the things that I normally do. They're not always related to woodworking. When it comes to fixing up the house I've got another channel dedicated completely to that so I stay away from that but everything else is fair game for this channel whatever I feel like doing. Staying with that subject I like to touch on something else and that's the idea that when you're watching YouTube you're always watching a tutorial video or some kind of instructional video especially when it has to do with this type of uh, thing here where guys are doing things and I can't speak for anyone else but when you're watching my channel that's not always what you're getting. I'm making these videos mainly for entertainment also to motivate motivate guys to get out in their shop and do things and inspire them to try to think of different projects to do. Secondary to that is that I've normally got something informative in there as well. I don't cover all the safety rules. I don't do everything in the most safe way but what you have to do is consider how long I've been doing this. I have a lot of experience. I've been doing this all of my life ever since I was a little kid and that's a long time ago. I'm 50 now almost 50 and I started doing do-it-yourself stuff when I was like kid like almost a baby I started taking stuff apart you know that was where I got all my basic training when I was a kid taking apart all mine and everyone else's toys that I could get my hands on so when you're watching me you're watching someone who has a lot of experience a lot of practice doing what they're doing I'm constantly getting comments on how I use the table saw how unsafe it looks also how I use the angle grinder you know especially without the blade guard on there and the other thing is the fact that I don't wear gloves when I'm doing a lot of this stuff and these comments keep coming and coming and coming over and over and over again doesn't matter if I answer them or not so I stopped answering the majority of them occasionally I do answer but it usually doesn't go anywhere because 10 minutes later I'm getting the same comment again as for how I use the table saw, like I said earlier, I have a lot of experience. I cannot stress enough how much of a difference practice and experience will make when you're handling a tool. It's like anything else. It's like riding a bike. The first time you get on a bike, you're probably going to fall over. Nobody's an expert when they first ride a bike. It's the same for every tool that you'll handle. I started watching the new Yankee workshop when it was like just starting. One of the things that Norm Abrams is most famous for is his little safety warning at the beginning of his shows and that's where he talks about reading and understanding and following the safety rules and then he goes on to say the most important safety rule is to wear these safety glasses. But as strange as it may seem I'm going to disagree with Norm on that. I don't think that the most important safety rule is to wear your safety glasses. The most important safety rule in everything that you do 
every dangerous situation is to maintain your focus. Concentrate on what you're doing. Do not get distracted. Distraction and lack of focus or loss of focus will almost always result in an accident, something that could be avoided if you're paying close attention to what you're doing. And that's what you get when you're watching me. My attention never wavers. The world could end around me and I would complete the cut or the operation that I'm doing safely. The next thing is the grinder without any blade guard. To be honest, I have used this thing hundreds of times. I've gone through hundreds of these discs, literally. I used to trim the bottoms of steel doors with these blades. That's cutting through like sometimes three layers of 16 gauge steel. I have never ever have one of these shatter. The other thing is that when I'm cutting with it, I'm not holding it in front of me. The blade is spinning. It's not aiming at me. I'm always to one side. So if anything does happen, it's going to miss me or it's going to hit my arm. Not a big deal. Would it be better if I had a blade guard on there? Obviously. But to be honest, a lot of the times the blade guard gets in the way. Another thing is I bought a bunch of five inch discs that wouldn't fit inside the blade guard because this is a four and a half inch grinder. And so is the one that I have that plugs in. And in order to use those blades, the guard won't fit. Last thing is gloves. And that's not to say that I don't get comments on a lot of other things, but these three are the biggest ones that I get comments on. Table saw, grinder, and gloves. Gloves is really... Um, something that I don't understand. That's like a basic safety rule for anyone handling machinery is to avoid wearing gloves at all costs. If you uh, happen to contact something that's spinning with gloves on and it catches it, catches the glove, it could tear your fingers off or severely, you know, break your hand or your arm even. Some of you might have heard of Jesse James. He builds motorcycles. He was on TV. He's a famous guy. He actually pulled his little finger off recently, within the last couple of years, I think it was, wearing gloves. It got tangled in a machine and it pulled his little finger right clean off. So that's the hazard with wearing gloves. It's called entanglement hazard, if you want to look it up. For the most part, I don't need to wear gloves anyway because my hands are what you would call work hardened. They get calloused and rough from doing constant work. Anyway, that's it for this one. I'll be back to woodworking soon. I have a clamp project that I want to get started on. I'm going to be doing a detailed build on this channel. It might be two. It might be even three videos, although I doubt it. It's probably going to be two. It might even be one longer one. And then I'll condense that into one shorter one for my other channel as well. So you got that to look forward to a return to woodworking.